Hello and welcome to the weekly Kashmir University Video Digest Quest. First, a look at the highlights. Iqbal Institute organizes lecture on Iqbal and Nietzsche. Professor Chitraleka discusses nation states and identity. And Law Society organizes quiz competition. Now the details of these events with your host Omar Malik. The Iqbal Institute of Culture and Philosophy organized an extension lecture on Iqbal and Nietzsche. Professor Ian Almond, a professor of world literature at the Georgetown University, Qatar, delivered the extension lecture. Coordinator Dr. Mushtaq Ahmad Ghanai presented the welcome address in which he stressed the importance of the Iqbal studies. Iqbal studies has become widely academic interest of scholars, researchers, and students all over the world. Its importance lies in Iqbal's contribution to multifaceted areas of knowledge, sciences, and culture, like philosophy, religion, social sciences, education, law, and literature. Its impact on academic and literary circles could be felt all over the subcontinent in general and on Kashmir in particular, as Allama Muhammad Iqbal is the son of this soil, as he himself says, Tanam Gulezi Khayabani Jannate Kashmir. Dilaz hari me hijaz nawaz e shirazas. My body is a flower from a garden in the paradise of Kashmir. My heart is from sanctum of hijaz and my song is from shiraz. Dr. Mudassir Mufti introduced Professor Ian Alman to the participants. The topic of Ian's talk is Nietzsche and Islam. Actually, Ian has a full length book that I just uh, named. It's called. Uh, the, it's called, which one? History of Islam in German Thought, yeah. And in that book, Ian uh, examines the engagement of German Orientalists, or German writers, not Orientalists actually, German writers who have, uh, you know, in some sense engaged engage with Islam, and there are great German, German names like Leibniz, Kant, Herder, Goethe, Schlegel, Hegel, Marx, and of course Nietzsche. Professor Ian, an author of five books that has been translated in 12 world languages, said that Nietzsche was an anti-philosopher. Nietzsche, first and foremost, is an anti-philosopher, okay? So he's, um, he's against, uh, he's, he isn't a systematic philosopher in any kind of way. Indeed, he says, I mistrust all systematizers and avoid them. The will to a system is a lack of integrity. So in many ways, um, one of the things that immediately strikes you with Nietzsche is that he's a very unorthodox philosopher. I mean this formalistically, yeah? He doesn't talk through systems. He doesn't perform theses and antitheses. He uses humor. He uses aphorisms. He uses jokes. He insults repeatedly. And in many ways, it's almost a performative sense. You get the sense that Nietzsche because he was so powerfully articulate, uses language as a vehicle in itself. And indeed, he says, my ideal way of philosophizing is, is to philosophize with a hammer. Nietzsche defined truth as a walking army of metaphors. He said that Nietzsche fell closer to the culture of Islam than Greece or Rome. The culture of Islam, Nietzsche says this, Nietzsche was a professor of classics, of Greece and Rome. He became, at the age of 24, the youngest ever full professor of classics at the University of Basel. Any students there, don't get depressed by that, okay? At the age of 24, he was a full professor. So he was a Hellenist, he was a philologist, yeah? He devoted his life to Greek and, and Latin. And he says here, the culture of Islam in Spain is more closely related to us than Greece and Rome. It's an extraordinary thing when you're fully familiar with Nietzsche's biography. It's a, it's a striking thing to say. And I think it is a symptomatic of the distance that at the very end Nietzsche had traveled from Europe. And I don't mean geographically, I mean mentally. By the very end of his life, and maybe this is one of the reasons why Iqbal felt he was on the cusp of becoming a Muslim. We'll talk about that. Um, but that is certainly the case uh, here that he, he's at the very as term, um, hermeneutically is at the very end of his tether with regards to, to Europe. Former Dean Arts Professor G.R. Malik, while presiding over the function, said that he was impressed with the lecture of Professor Ian. We believe 
and that is what the Quran and Sunnah teaches us, that this world is not the be all and end all of existence. This is only a place of trial. And this life, to be accepted positively and hugged, this life is only a preparation for the eternal life to come. Let me quote one or two verses from the Quran, which are eye-opening for us who live in what, what is called post-modern age. The Prophet is commanded by Allah in the Quran, Turn away from the person who doesn't have that live contact with the ultimate reality. The UNESCO Madanjeet Institute of Kashmir Studies organized an extension lecture. Professor Chitralekha Zutshi delivered an extension lecture on nation states, identity, sovereignty, and ideologies. At James Pickney Harrison, Professor of History at the College of William and Mary, Wilmsburg, Virginia, Professor Zutshi said that when she started to read on Kashmir, there was no serious scholarship on it. So when I began work on Kashmir, and it was, yes, that's how old I am, in the mid-1990s, um, there was hardly any scholarship uh, on Kashmir. I mean, there were a, a few books and, uh, you know, I came here in, to Srinagar in 1995-96 in to begin my research and, you know, it was the height of the insurgency. Things were really bad. I mean, this university, by the way, where I also came, um, was completely deserted. Completely. I mean, there was nobody here. So it was a, a very, very different... Um, very, very different place. Uh, but, you know, any, anyway, so I used to go to the, to the archives and I used to go to libraries and everyone used to tell me, uh, Madam, do kitabe hai, ek raj tarenge nahi padhiye, aapko sab history ka malum pad jayega. Or Walter Lawrence ki kitab, Valley of Kashmir padhiye, wo aapko. You know. um, I was interested in Kashmir primarily from a historical perspective, right? So I wanted to write about Kashmir in the, in the 18th and 19th centuries. Um, so that I could contribute to South Asian historiography as a whole uh, in terms of questioning the idea of the Indian nation. Um, not in terms of, you know, that the Indian nation doesn't exist, but, you know, how can we complicate the idea of the Indian nation if we look at it from the perspective of the regions, right? And Kashmir was just one other region. She said that today, multidisciplinary approach has helped scholars to draw from a wide variety of work. You know, one of the other characteristics, and Humera sort of in passing mentioned this, uh, of, the, uh, of, the, of, the, of all the scholarship in this volume, is that they're all located in particular disciplines, but they're all very multidisciplinary. In other words, their methodologies are very eclectic. Uh, <clears throat> so, you know, they draw on... Uh, so, the, so the essays draw on, uh, you know, if they come from the field of cultural studies or they come from the field of English literature, they're drawing on, you know, historical methodologies and, um, uh, and anthropological work. And if they're historical <coughs> scholarship, then, you know, they're drawing on ethnographic work. You know, speaking for myself, you know, I'm a historian who, you know, does all sorts of work on, on Kashmir. And it, it, it's required, right, because there's a dearth of sources here. And so you need to kind of always be, uh, you know, on your toes with the way that you, you know, um, approach, uh, approach your work. Assistant Professor Dr. Ibrahim said that a lot of researchers think that they are first to do research on Kashmir, which is far from the reality. A lot of researchers uh, we have met lately also have this idea that they're the first to research Kashmir. A lot of people start with those ideas. And uh, uh, today, uh, you know, you, you search online repositories and you can mark trajectories of work, thematic changes which have happened over a period of time. And at Kashmir Studies, what we have proposed is uh, that we will have an annual review of Kashmir Studies. Uh, what we will try to do is, we will try to see which are the themes uh, which have been prominent in discussion on Kashmir in that particular year. And we have seen this over the period of last 10, 15 years that research on Kashmir is being actively taken up in a lot of universities outside Kashmir too. And we need to have points of convergence, points of discussion. Dean Social Science at the Central University of Kashmir, Professor Noor Ahmed Baba lamented that there is a dearth of serial scholarships on Kashmir. That uh, there's been dearth of scholarship, serious scholarship, scholarship, serious scholarship, uh, which was properly methodologically uh, trained and uh, on different facets of Kashmir. It's not only one facet of it. It's 
not history, it's sociology, it is psychology also now, uh, politics and everything. Uh, I think, yes, you used to see what challenge the young people around uh, us that you should, uh, this is an opportunity because uh, she is here and she has uh, helped us to have uh, a very useful discourse and possibly pushed us to thinking on many things. Uh, we may agree with her on, uh, on many things. We may disagree also on some. Disagreement is always a process through which you, you promote for more further knowledge. The Law Society of the Department of Law organized a quiz competition in which students and scholars from the law participated. A total number of 11 teams participated in the quiz competition. Speaking on the occasion, Professor Muhammad Ayub, while congratulating students and Dean Law for holding the quiz competition, advised to have teams from other institutions as well. Well, it has been dream of this department that our students participate more and more in purely academic activities because debates, quizzes and other workshops are meant to enhance your capabilities, your skills which may ultimately help you in becoming a good lawyer who will promote the cause of justice to the society. I hope that you will continue to participate in future debates with the same type of vigor as you have shown today. This is an in-family exercise in order to show the best results. I would urge the organizers that in future the participants from other university, Central University, and the law colleges must also be given a chance so that they don't take it that um, things are done in such a way that they happen to be aliens to the system. Associate Professor Dr. Farid Ahmed Rafiki, while responding to this suggestion, said that in past such events were held in which different institutions took part. The last competition we had uh, held under, the, under this Shahamdan mood competition, we had all the teams from other colleges as well. And incidentally, it was perhaps the Central University team which had won. So that is there, but basically I would uh, we would rather this will be our effort to see to it that uh, it is more broad-based and at the same time the same candidates, even other candidates also, they are given chance to compete uh, again and again so that they are groomed together in such a way that ultimately gives us the best talent uh, for this quiz competition. Dean and Head Law Department Professor Muhammad Hussain lauded the efforts of the Law Society for bringing laurels to the department. It has brought more, uh, 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 you know, laurels to the department in so many ways, and then it, is, it has basically uh, it is keeping uh, you, uh, keeping your spirit, keeping us, uh, you know, always live and uh, keeping us conscious about the uh, the happenings which which uh, surround us. I mean to respond to those happenings. I mean, this is what is their job and they are doing it so marvelously. I'm thankful to you, sir. Uh, the purpose has to be that, I mean, we have to progress. And in this uh, march of progression, uh, we are all together and have been together. Mashallah, thanks to Almighty. Later awards and certificates were distributed among the participants. That's all for today's episode. Log on to our website emmrckashmir.com where you can check the latest episode of The Quest. You can also watch it on our YouTube channel that is KU Television. Do send us your valuable suggestions at our email address that is quest at emmrckashmir.com.
Before I take your leave, here are a few words of wisdom. Unlike a drop of water which loses its identity when it joins the ocean, man does not lose his being in the society in which he lives. Man's life is independent. He is born not for the development of the society alone, but for the development of his self.